Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Pro Division in the Christmas Park Tournament here in Golf Clash the game. Video sponsored by Golf Clash and Playdemic and make sure you do subscribe to the channel. Also visit golfclashtommy.com for more Golf Clash related content for free. Last but not least, get the ultimate tournament guides on patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. And make sure you don't miss our massive giveaway which will be hosted the 22nd of December. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 9 p.m. Central European Time, 8 p.m. UK Time here on the YouTube channel. The only thing you need to do to be able to attend and to win is to become a subscriber. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, the elevation adjustment, what club and ball I do suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are suggestions. You don't have to follow them, but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. For hole number one, we will be playing with a berserker ball using two bars of side spin, no top spin or back spin whatsoever. Playing with X bar level seven, stretch out to see the top of the red ring by the rough line. Then we release and we do adjust maximum distance plus 10. Push up and we're going to push up three rings. And that we do with X bar level seven, X bar level eight, we do push up two and a half rings to make sure that we do not push up too far. Ball just outside the adjustment ring to the left and try to hit, perfect. The thing that we're looking for here is to just get our ball safely onto the fairway. Have in mind that this is the qualifying round that the wind will be changed to the opening round and to the weekend round. So in my opinion, it's better to play it very safe and get the ball up so we do have a chance for just locking in the birdie and where we may be playing a bit more aggressive for the opening and for the weekend round. Now second shot, there is a way to reach for the rough bump obviously, if we would like to do so, but I don't really feel that's going to be the way that we are looking for now. If we do have a drive that goes far enough that we're not going to go into overpower, fine. Other than that though, we will be playing somewhere between medium and maximum distance of our club. And using a little bit of side spin here, using the ball guideline is definitely something we would like. Have in mind though, aim for the pin, do not aim for the left side of the pin because that will make you miss to the left because here I do adjust uh, medium distance or like in between medium and maximum distance, 6.1 range for 6.1 miles per hour and honestly I'm somewhat just looking to get myself a birdie here because once again the eagle is going to be extremely difficult to get uh, regularly and I do believe that the eagle is going to be claimed if we do play the rough bump in a more bigger extent but we will see what we do going forward but we focus on hole number one to get a safe birdie. For hole number two we're gonna play one of the tougher par fives in the game meaning that this is a hole that we do play for an eagle so an eagle should be considered to be a drop here we play with white ring to the left by the rough line with rock level seven four bars of top spin no side spin whatsoever if you play with the rock level eight level nine have in mind that you will have a different plus yardage and not start into max but you will still be using the white ring to the left by the rough line adjust max plus 10 then we push up to max with the rock level seven you push up two rings with the rock level eight and level nine because if you would be pushing up the rock level 8 or level 9 to max, you will go too far and you will 100% roll into the rough. Comes in lovely here and we do not want to push it as, you know, as hard as possible here. We don't want to get it safely up to 340 yards. Second shot is just to transport the ball up towards the bunker that you can see in the center of the fairway. Two bars of top spin, three bars of side spin to the left. Have in mind that the spin could be different here depending on if you have a long or a short drive. To just give you a reference, if you have a drive that is up to 350 yards, you may only need one bar of top spin. If you have a drive that is 330 yards, you will need three or maybe four bars of top spin to get the ball up to the same distance there. Use the wood club with the most power to prevent you from having to go with any type of overpower. Adjust max with no elevation. You can see that we're not looking to get as far as possible. We're looking to position ourselves the best way possible. Now, we do have a third shot that's going to be played with our Grizzly. You can play this shot with the Goliath as well if you do not have the Grizzly level 7. 
plus two uh, is what I'm marking down now on the thorn. And I'm going to explain why I do that once we're done with the shot. So plus two with the thorn, that's perfect when it's my turn. Now we're looking to use the uh, top. Uh, what can I say? We're looking to use the left side of the green here. Look how I'm mixing around with the spin here to catch that massive funnel that we do have there on the top left. And that is what I'm going to try to do every single time. And eventually then I do go with right spin. I move my target so you can see that we have the ball guideline approximately one green square from the fringe on the left. You see here we're all the way up there. And so you can see here that we're using side spin to the right and three and a half bar top spin. And then we do have half of the uh, half of the yellow ring or like one third of the yellow ring outside the fringe there. Adjustment 26% slider minus 20% elevation. And for those that don't use slider, it's the number that is in between minimum and medium distance with minus 20 comes up lovely there on the hill to fall down towards the pin. Have in mind that if you do have a very bad great right on this shot, you may risk missing the rough completely. I just want to have that in mind. But I do believe that this shot is superior to the other type of routes because this funnel is massive. Just to touch base again about the plus two that I just mentioned with the thorn. Once it's your turn, Look at what plus yardage your thorn are in before you move up to Grizzly. Why? It's because that will help you determine what adjustment you're going to use for the Grizzly as we do not have any yardage note to use. So, plus 2 thorn equals 26% slider with the Grizzly minus 20%. It's not often that we do play with a Marlin from second tee, but this time it's the time. Max backspin, half a bar of side spin to the left. Look, I'm looking to be in absolute minimum distance of my club with the second bounce to be into the bright green square that is uh, around, that is four, three and a half green squares to the right of the pin, okay? And make sure you pack the Grizzly because the Grizzly will help you uh, make it to rest on the minimum distance line. If you use the Goliath or a B52, then you will blur over all the time and that's gonna be making it much harder. Adjustment, minimum distance plus 10. A uh, slight 1201 pull angle is what I'm looking for. And it bounces lovely, lovely, lovely and rolls right that pin for a beautiful hole in one here on hole and number three. For hole number four, we will be laying up just short with the rock. Four bars of top spin, sorry, two bars of top spin, obviously, and two bars of side spin to the left. We're looking for half of the blue ring inside the rough to the right at starting plus 12. Obviously, with the rock eight and nine, you will have a different plus yardage as it has more power, but the blue ring should be half inside the right rough because it has the same accuracy. Maximum distance plus 10, which in this case is six, sorry, seven rings. And we then adjust and then we're going to hit perfect. At least we're going to attempt to. We're not using any curl whatsoever here. Bouncing on the fairway over the bunker there on the right. And the thing that we are looking for here is this ball to somewhat sit nicely around 425, sorry, 325 to 330. Now, second shot is going to be an absolute minimum distance of your club. And here I'm using Grizzly because it has a really good ball guideline. And I will be only be using backspin here for my Grizzly. The thing that, I'm, uh, that I need to look for here is to aim right side of the pin. And the reason for that is that we're using so much backspin combined with having a compressed ball guideline that the ball will turn left. Especially when the green slopes slightly to the right. So aim right side of the pin. And then you will have the ball guideline go through the hole approximately one to one and a half green square. And then you adjust always minimum distance plus 10. So in this scenario here, we just need to move our target a little bit more to the right. As explained, the right side of the cup is going to be perfect uh, for our adjustment here. And then we should be very, very close if not getting this one to drop fairly often uh, with minimum distance plus 10 adjustment.
This may look weird. Why do I start with a Berserker Ball here on hole number 5? It's because I want to find minimum distance and find an easy position all the time. Left side of the yellow ring by the edge of the rough. And then we will apply 1.1 backspin and one and a half bar side spin to the left. But more, most importantly, we do want to have the ball guideline to go just above the pin. Okay, so you need to adapt the backspin in that way. 1201 pull angle for the adjust. And before we do adjust, we change to a kingmaker to get the correct ball and the correct wind. 6.3 rings for 6.5 miles per hour equal medium distance no elevation power five ball numbers so 6.3 for 6.5 you can see it bounces nicely into the rough and it just just barely missed that one and obviously i'm not i'm not expecting this one to drop all the time but this is a really good chance especially when we can find minimum distance with a power five ball it doesn't have to be a berserker it can be whatever power five ball you possess but find minimum distance, find the correct position, then change. So you do make a correct, uh, so you do find the same position all the time. For hole number six, we will be playing a very tough par five. And the reason this one is very tough is due to its headwind. Here, I would recommend to play with the driver that gives you the most the top spin possible. There could be value in playing with the big topper and the power four slash power five ball if you do not possess at least six bars of top spin on the extra mile, for an example. Adjustment is going to be maximum distance plus 20. And as you can see, we are slightly falling down the hill, and that means that we do need to use overpower. As well, two rings of overpower is what I'm using, and here, as you can see on our first bounce, we could easily have played with a ring more. But it's better to play with control, and that's why two rings is good. We can also move our target a little bit more to the right if we want to be picky, because the further we are to the right, the easier it's going to be for the second shot. Second shot, we play for an eagle only, and that, therefore, I'm not going to try to push bouncing over the bunker in direct headwind, it's tough enough as it is. So we are going to use five bars of top spin, aiming for the right side of the green, or meaning right side of the, yeah, on the fairway, on the right side of the green. That's what I'm trying to say. Maximum distance, no elevation for this shot, and you will notice that we will adjust into overpower, and which is something that we do have to use here as well. And once again, when it comes to this hole, it's a tough one and the wind here is definitely making it even tougher. And that's why I'm not even considering trying to go for green and hoping for a better win come opening round or weekend round instead. So now my focus is to just maintain the safety when we play and get that freaking eagle. For hole number seven, the final of the par three. So here I do start in minimum distance of my club here with the guardian. And why do I do that? It's because I'm trying to find uh, an easy way to set up this shot. So I'm using max backspin here, then I'm counting. I'm counting in this case, seven green square to the right of the pin. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven and a half green seven and a half green square to the right and then to be above that particular green square once that is found i use a kingmaker ball and have in mind that you don't have to start with a power five ball if you don't want to adjustment minimum distance with a 20 percent under adjustment yes that is not the true elevation but it works extremely well with this type of shot so minimum distance minus 20 percent power three ball settings and Bounce, 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 and it rolls right up in for a beautiful hole in one here on hole number seven. For hole number eight, I will give you two approach shots one with Guardian, one with Sniper. But we start with the drive six bars of top spin and three bars of side spin to the left is what we are using. And we are in that case aiming for uh, the yellow ring to be, or like the half of the red ring to be inside the rough on the left and starting at plus one. If you play with an extra mile level seven, I would recommend to go up to plus six yard mark. Why plus six? It's because we do have less top spin and we also have less power. 
Half a ball of curl to the left is what we're looking for, and in this case, we're not using any overpower whatsoever. With a lower level driver, it could definitely be that you have to go with a little bit of overpower, but shouldn't need much. We don't want to clip the rough, we just want to uh, bounce over the rough and roll nicely up to around 340 to 350 yards. Now, second shot is going to be very interesting, and the reason I feel this is going to be an interesting shot is that the ball guideline is going to be extremely glitchy and very hard to find some sort of a uh, consistent way of attacking the pin. So, and that is why I'm giving you two type of approaches where both of them is not that particularly close, but something to work with. You can see here when I'm moving around, there is what we are like to call a fake funnel. There is a sticky spot there on the green and I'm trying to catch it just to help myself a little bit. Now with my adjust, I do go minimum distance, no elevation, which is, or like uh, even less than that. I see that I adjust 4.5 rings, which is actually minimum distance no elevation here so i would recommend you to go at least medium distance here even though we are close to a minimum distance line because you can see that it bounces on the fairway nicely but we are way off to the right there and also speed wise so difficult to get that one for sure so we're gonna change to the guardian if you want to and here i would obviously recommend to play if you do have a guardian that is in level seven plus or maybe six plus as well we however want to have a max backspin on our club so max backspin on the guardian level seven uh, and you can see here that we are very close to max distance as a measurement using half of the uh, half of the yellow ring as just as a marker uh, to be just in max distance and there you can see i'm using max backspin and i will be using half a bar of side spin to the right as well looking at my adjustment here now is you know we should be moving ourselves a smidge to the left here uh, for sure but the second bounce is one green square above the pin and uh, then um that is what i'm using there as a reference medium distance no elevation um and here it most definitely shows that we do need to have more adjust so i would recommend us to play this one around 75 percent club and also we could start a little bit more to the left have in mind though that i'm opening this one up for you to somewhat tweak yourself obviously i will continue to work with it but the thing that we can notice here that we missed to the right and we also missed too high which means we need to back up and we need to add more adjust those two things needs to be added if you're gonna play the guardian however though tough par four to get any consistent drops on even though it looks fairly simple For hole number nine, I think there is great value in playing with the rock. And I'm using a power five ball here. There is two reasons for that. One, if we do clip the rough with our drive, which is very easy to do if we do hit a great right, then we will still have the chance to reach for, uh, for, the, uh, for the bounce over that we're looking for. Or if we do get far enough, we can actually attempt to go for the rough bump, which is my plan. Plus 22 with the rock level seven. Have in mind that playing with the rock level 8, level, level 9, you do need to have a different distance. And the most important is that you do need to focus on having the second bounce approximately two rings away from the rough. Three bars of top spin, two bars of side spin to the right, half a ball of curl to the right. Adjustment maximum distance plus zero. And we we'll get a very nice roll here down the fairway and we'll get to 348 yards. Second shot. We do have a rough bump opportunity here. Have in mind that if you have a lower level sniper, that will not be a possibility. And then you're gonna have to bounce over on the island. When we play the rough bump, we play no elevation and trying to judge club distance. For me, judging club distance here, I would see this one as 92% slider with no elevation. I do play 95% slider and will therefore miss to the right of the pin. Make sure to leave the ball guideline short of pin, otherwise the ball will come in way too hot and even if you hit the pin it will bounce out. So we do adjust, in this case 8.6 miles per hour, if I'm not mistaken, yes 8.6 is what we're doing. And then it's time to take our shot. And once again I do believe 8.6 is a little bit too hefty and we would be having to deduct at least 0.1 for that. If you do play the bounce over, uh, then I would strongly recommend you to use a minus 10 elevation 
uh, to then base that on club distance. In the end though, hold number nine offers an opportunity even though it is not an easy one to drop. Thank you so much for watching this playthrough with the tournament win here for the Christmas Park tournament in Gold Clash. The game video is sponsored by Gold Clash and Playdemic. Make sure you get the ultimate tournament guides on patreon.com slash goldclashtommy. You can also get more information about Gold Clash and content for free on goldclashtommy.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching and good luck in the Christmas Park tournament.